Hey, my homeowners, it's Josh Sternberg from Sternberg Law Group coming at you from sunny Southern California. Today, we're going to talk about what it means to have a change of circumstances in a loan modification and when that is important. So first thing, change in circumstances means something in your life, typically a financial happening has changed. Either you got a new job, you got laid off, you filed bankruptcy, you paid off an automobile, something to that extent can be considered a change in circumstances. We'll talk about change in circumstances a little more in a second. But for now, let's talk about why change in circumstances are important. Change in circumstances are important because when a loan mod has been denied, and remember, most of these loan mods are denied off the bat. At least 50, 60% of loan mods are denied by the lender. And then you're in a position where you'll need to resubmit your loan modification if you don't have the money to bring your loan current and you're trying to avoid foreclosure. There are also bankruptcy options to keep your home and refinance options. We've discussed that in other videos. But for this video, I'm going to try to stay on course and discuss what it means to have a change in circumstances and how that is important. It's important to understand that if your loan mod has been denied, you need to be able to show. When I say show, you need to be able to show a documentable proof that there's been a change in circumstances in your household. The reason why change in circumstance is important is because if you want to resubmit for a loan modification and you submit the exact same information, they're going to take one quick look at it and they're going to deny it because the file is the exact same. So you need to be able to either have a change in circumstances or you need to be able to come up with a material change in circumstances so that you can resubmit and try to do another loan modification. The change in circumstances that we will usually use in our office. So what we typically look to do is we typically look to change income or expenses by at least 10% in one direction. So you may be thinking, how do I change my income by 10%? For some people, it's very easy to do. For some people, it's not as easy to do. And those people have to look towards the expenses. If you are self-employed, it should be very easy to change how much money you're making by at least 10% because you have control over your budgets. You have control over your spending. So you can delay a payment to a vendor from one month to the next month. And by doing so, you can show an additional 10% profit. So to understand for the point of this video, if you are self-employed, you should be able to, on your own, show a documentable proof in change in circumstances. You just have to get a little bit wise about how you're doing your profit and losses and how you're handling your incoming and outgoing of monies for those calendar months that you're trying to show a change in circumstances. So for me, I love to see self-employed people because it gives us flexibility. So self-employment, great. So now, if you're not self-employed, how do you show a change in circumstances? Because if you're just getting a regular pay stub, W-2 every month, and that W-2 doesn't change every two weeks, every two weeks, every two weeks, it's the same W-2 income, then you're right, it is hard to change your income. Before you decide that there's no way to change your income, please look to see if you have alternative sources of income. A family contribution. You can have a family that starts to contribute money to you. B, renting a room in your home. I have a lot of clients who've been successful in changing their income by renting a room in their home. Let's say they're renting the room for $1,000 a month. It brings the income up by $1,000 a month and it gets us over the hurdle of showing a change in circumstances. So again, self-employment, renting a room, family contribution are the most common ways of changing your income. But if you can't change your income, then you need to focus on changing your expenses. And to focus on changing your expenses, you need to look at what are called discretionary expenses. Discretionary expenses are expenses that you pay yourself or that you have control of. Food, gasoline, to some certain extent, utilities, cable, internet. So those are things that you can adjust. For example, if your food budget is $800 a month, lower your food budget to $500 the following month or to $400 the following month to show a savings of three to $400. Instead of running the air conditioning all summer, open the windows, put on some fans, the lower the utility bills. If you have a high cable, high internet bill, okay, think about cutting back on cable for a couple months to save a couple hundred dollars. If you're driving all over town, think about doing some ride sharing, meaning carpooling. Think about taking the train to work. Think about carpooling with your spouse to work. Different ways of lowering these discretionary income. Okay, now trust me, I understand it's very difficult to adjust your expenses, but 
This is only something you need to do for a limited amount of time. You just need to do it for a long enough period of time to show your lender that there has been a change in circumstances. So I hope this video is helpful. As usual, again, my name is Josh Sternberg with Sternberg Law Group. You can find us online at sternberglawgroup.com. We're in Los Angeles, California, but we're happy to help discuss questions with anybody. If you have questions, leave them below in the comments and please subscribe. It really helps us out on our YouTube channel. We hope everybody's well. I hope this video is helpful to my homeowners. Thank you so much.